Hello folks and welcome to another Richard Head Longbows video. This is a bit of a bonus video. Uh, you've got the two of us here in the right. usual space that you see behind you. Lots of you have commented on this. Um, it isn't a graveyard of longbows, though it may look suspiciously like that. Um, no, this is just how our workshop looks <laughs> after 40 odd years of making bows and arrows. Uh, we seem to have accumulated uh, one or two. And a few of you have been asking, what are they? Why are they there? These are all questions I have asked over the years because, believe it or not, there's actually We've stock no behind idea. here. There's <laughs> cupboards behind it with yeah. things in. You can't get to. That, yeah. We um, don't know what's in them either. No, I don't know. something important. So, uh, yeah, so I'm going to ask him to go through these uh, and throw the ones away. No, I won't make yeah. him do that. Um, and let you know what some of these are. And uh, yeah, maybe we will be able to do something with them eventually. So thank you for those people who've been asking what the hell this stuff is. Um, so yeah, I'm going to leap behind the camera and Richard can run you through what's here. Right, okay. <laughs> uh, right, the first one here, let's have a look. It's... 47 pounds of 26 inches bamboo back a u core and a lemon with belly green leather handle gold leaf trim leather trim top and bottom mother pearl arrow plate set in uh, so that's that one next one is a self u bow little bit of uh, undulation in the sapwood. I think that's probably a lady's. £30 at 25 inches. There's an arrow plate both sides. I think maybe the person changed from right to left handed and we put an arrow plate in. But uh, So that's uh, Oregon U, I think. Next one is one that I've been shooting for field shooting. That's well, fairly light, 45 at 26, but if you're field shooting in the woods, you don't need any more than that. Again, Oregon U, uh, Mother of Pearl arrow plate. That looks like some of the Mother of Pearl that came off the uh, Queen Mary when they were fitting it out, and we managed to get hold of some of that uh, uh, Mother of Pearl from an old gentleman that was involved in that. Uh, green leather handle. Again, gold leaf trim, top and bottom. Not too long bow because I've got a fairly short draw length, so not that long. Obviously, uh, horn, water buffalo horn knocks on the end. Next one is hickory and lemon wood. That's 50 at 29. We've had that one for a long time. As you can see, it's taken a set. Hadn't actually affected the draw weight of it. It's one we tend to use for people to draw up if we're checking there draw length, what sort of draw weight they can they can manage. Um, it was originally a left-handed bow, so the arrow plate's on the other side. We've never bothered to put one over here because it doesn't get used other than drawing up or shooting the odd arrow into the target. What's that one? That's a, was a lady's bow, 28 at 24. Bamboo back. Uh, something in there could be lemon wood. Not sure what we've put in there actually. Could be Pernambuco and a lemon wood belly. Next one is one that my wife has been using as she's getting a little bit weaker. This is a £30 at 25 so ladies bow. Uh, we had some different braids so we put that on the handle. Again, mother of pearl arrow plate looks like that from the Queen Mary. So it's bamboo back, a U core, lemon wood belly. Nice bow. That one is was also my wife's, and that was forty-five pound at twenty-eight, which she's used for a long time. Won a lot of competitions with that. It's now been sort of pensioned off hickory back and an English U for the rest of it and she's won a lot of competitions that including quite a lot of flight competitions so stood the test of time that one uh, what's that covered in dust 
That worm is, can you see what the weight is? 50 something. 50 something at 26. Uh, again, leather handle, sort of crocodile skin pattern. Gold leaf trim top and bottom on red leather. Arrow plate, we've done a little bit more fancy work around it. Uh, bamboo back. Uh, looks like a, probably a layer of lemon wood. Layer of purple heart. Looks like some Pernambuco in there. And a couple of layers actually of lemon wood on the belly. So that's um, quite a nice nice bow. God, there's hundreds of them here. There is. I didn't know so many. Too many. What are we doing with them all? Dunno. This one's 48 to 25. I don't even know who this is. This, is. this might, be what, oh, it might be one I've been using, perhaps. <laughs> it's bamboo, bamboo backing. Yeah, I'd like to use this one. I'll use this one next yeah, time. Bamboo that, backing. <laughs> it's got oh, um, American U in the belly, but it's strips. There's several strips of side by side. So there's probably about a dozen pieces of wood in this bow. So they've got th thin strips of of you side by side and then plane down and then put in the the belly don't ask me why I did it I think it just um, uh, helps to use some smaller pieces of wood um, but like a lot of the I don't know whether they do it now but a lot of the recurve bows they used to have very thin strips um, of um, wood between the layers of fiberglass uh, to stop it, tw stop it twisting really. So and and give it that extra strength and spring. So that I did that with that one. So that's that one. Um, that's another U bow, self U bow. Uh, not a lot of problems with it. Small knot there, which never caused any problems. Hardly goes through to the other side. Mother pearl arrow plate. And handle again, and that's forty pound at twenty-seven. Another basic um, hickory lemon wood bow. Nothing fancy about that. Again, a lightweight bow, twenty-five at twenty-eight. I think we've used that for have a goes for the public. So a lightweight bow that can be drawn quite a long way back, no problems. That isn't a bow at all. Uh, which one we've used for demonstrations when we've been demonstrating bow making. I removed the, most of the sap wood on this because it wasn't very good and I followed the undulations of the, the wood and I then glued a very thin layer of hickory to the back of it and then followed those undulations with clamps to clamp it all in. Uh, there I've shown how to put in a Dutchman's plug so we've just used that as a, a demo piece for uh, demonstrations. That is going to be a self U bow. If I ever get round to finishing it, covered with dust. Uh, there was obviously problems with the wood and I have had to cut out a bloom there and a matching one the other end. Eventually I'll glue in two pieces of U into there and then we'll, we'll finish it off. But otherwise it's a, a perfect piece of wood. But couple of flaws in it which you only come across when you've actually started making the bow. Uh, that's a pair of billets which we've jointed in the handle. Probably can't see the joint very well, I don't know whether you can or not. You can certainly see it there. Uh, again that, um, that will make a bow somewhere. That one is an old Victorian bow and doesn't seem to be a maker's name on that. It could be a Buchanan or someone like that, but it's an old, an old bow, a sort of a plush handle. self you obviously, uh, horn knocks. Probably early early 1800s, could be 200 years old by now. 
That one is a bow by Fair, who was a maker in the city of Bath, and we've actually done a video showing this bow and about Fair, who also made uh, toys and games uh, and that sort of thing. So we've done a video about that one. Uh, again, a demo bow just showing a piece of you and the undulations you get in it and marking on the belly following those undulations in the wood and then I would use an axe to get down to that line and then a draw knife, spoke shave before we make it into a bow but again I've just kept that as a demonstration piece uh, that's just a piece of wood that's an old, an old Slazinger flat bow Handles coming apart. And that was just that's just a bit of black tape on there. Um, yeah, I don't know who made that one. That said Lindop. Let me see. Lindop. Oh, yeah. So it's not Slazinger. That's Mr. Lindop, whoever he was. That's probably the only one in existence. <laughs> Better keep that. Uh, oh, another another blooming piece of you. Uh, you can probably see the joint a bit more clearly there pair of billets jointed up ready to be made some went into a bow might end up selling some of this stuff I'll never get round to it uh, another old bow that is made by Muir of Edinburgh and again he was one of the top makers of long bows round that way you can see the the name uh, Muir Edinburgh he was one of the top makers and made them for the Royal Company of Archers. Uh, again, arrow plate, plush handle, ladies bow that one. Another old bow. Again, can't see a maker's name on it. A hickory backing, this one, and a U belly, plush handle, mother pearl arrow plate, and some gold leaf trim around the top and the bottom. Uh, that's one I've been using for target shooting. I've got a rubber band on there which you are allowed. Sophisticated sight. Uh, that's 47 at 26. Uh, bamboo back. Uh, purple heart core, lemon wood belly. Usual handle. Oh, that looks particularly horrible. I don't know where that came from. It's falling. Oh, it's, it's a broken bow. Don't show that anyone. It was a very old, old bow. It had lasted a long time before it started to give up the ghost, as you can see by the, the state of the handle. And that had a piece of abalone set in as a arrow plate. That was hickory, uh, purple heart, I think, and uh, lemon wood eventually gave up the ghost, as they all do. That one is another self view bow. I think the draw weight of that is getting close to £100. It was a great big piece of wood. Uh, quite a simple handle, you can see by the size of it. Again, Oregon U uh, from Earl Ulrich in America when we used to buy wood from him many many years ago. Maybe whittle that down to usable weight, you know. Uh, that's another hickory lemon wood one we used for having a go for the public. Ooh, another flat bow, is that a slat? Is a slazinger. 30 something pounds. Uh, say a very simple track site has been put on that uh, when it was used for beginners many years ago. So, not in the best of condition that one but that's the historical interest. That one again an old bow, Victorian Edwardian bow. Just, just lemon wood or it, it could be, it's probably more likely Degame which we have got quite a lot of. Uh, you can't get it anymore, or it could be lancewood, um, a simple handle, 
it's lost its knocks so we will be putting some knocks on that we've got a box full of old Victorian knocks that we got from the factory of Pearl when they closed so we'll fit some knocks to that uh, oh that's another one in the same condition and that's got a maker's name on it um, and that's uh, Airs, FH Airs, London. So we'll put some knocks on that one as well. Ooh, something secret here in a bag. What's this one? Oh, that's a, a simple reenactment bow, which is just sitting there waiting for a customer, I think. Whoever wants one. That's one we use for demonstrations. It's probably the dimensions of one of the larger bows and the Mary Rose. It was a piece of wood that wasn't good enough for making a bow. In fact, you can see there's a longitudinal crack in it there. Uh, it's also got a, got a twist in it. Uh, maybe if it had been pared down a bit, could have made a bow, but we've used that again as a demonstration just to so, show the size of a bow that um, may well have been used in, in battle if you were Particularly strong, we don't think everyone for a minute all used 180 pound longbows. I'm sure they didn't, as people today don't. Uh, what's that? Oh, it's another old bow. Victorian Edwardian bow, Aldred, uh, 48 at uh, 28 inches. Piece of view, self view bow. Okay, near the end. Uh, that's one I've used for clout shooting at times, hickory back. Uh, looks like Greenheart uh, in the belly, and uh, sorry, Greenheart in the centre and then Lemon belly. Again, abalone, arrow plate, green handle with that sort of gold bands that we put around it and then leather gold leaf leather trim top and bottom and that's 40 something no it's 50 50 at 26 and the last one is one that we made up as a, a fairly lightweight medieval style of bow no handle just showing people how it followed the undulations of the wood a simple cow horn knock on the end nothing fancy no handle, uh, just an arrow pass to show where the arrow would sit when you hold the bow. Uh, we put our logo on it, but when you hold it, you wouldn't see that. So if you were in a reenactment event, uh, you would cover that. You would cover that up. Um, so that's about it. So hope that was of some interest. See what we've got there. All sorts there from usable bows, ones that have seen better days and ones from the Victorian Edwardian era that are collector's items not to be used now collector's items to hang on the wall and a couple there we've got to put knocks on old bows often lose the knocks the glue wasn't that good so it, it, they, they tended to come off so we've got we've got knocks we can replace them with and uh, just make the bow look correct so that people can hang it on the wall as a display item yeah, if you click here to subscribe to the channel and down here to have a look at the video we produced about the bow made by Fair, the Bath Bowyer of the Victorian era and the other items that he used to make.